And when the angel of death comes to take Iblis's soul out, and Iblis runs to all the corners of the earth, and he finds the angel of death there. And he dies. He's taken away. Iblis doesn't want to die. You see? He doesn't want to die. He thinks he's still got hope. And that feeling, he puts it, or he, this is what he whispers into the minds of the human beings. Don't worry. You're going to live more. You've got long days to go. Don't worry. You're still young now. Person 70 years old says, You're still going to live. Don't worry. He's 80. You're still going to live. He's on his deathbed. At the hospital, don't worry. They say you're going to die, but there's still some hope. You're probably still going to live. Enjoy life. Have a little bit more of enjoyment. Don't worry about worship right now. Yes, the shaitan does that because that's his characteristic. And when the angel of death comes to take his soul, he runs away. He thinks he's not going to die. He thinks he can escape. SubhanAllah. I remember last class we mentioned about some scientific discoveries and theories based on discoveries they found now in, in, in space. Scientists say that the world, the universe will either reach a point where it will be stabilized, where everything will freeze, or they said the, uh, the universe will crunch, come back on itself like an elastic recoil, like elasticity. And it recoils. Some say it will keep stretching until it all gets destroyed and then a new universe will be created by another Big Bang. That's the, their idea when they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Quran tells us there will be a destruction. There'll be a collision. There'll be a recreation of something else, but not by chance, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's amazing how they say these things when they don't believe in the Quran. They're so close yet so far. Subhanallah. Allah then tells the angel of death, orders him to take Jibreel alayhi salam's soul out. This narration, I am not sure of its authenticity. But I did hear it from several shaykhs in my time, including the late Shaykh Kishk, rahmatullahi alayhi. He's a renowned scholar in Egypt. The point is, they said that the hadiths are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the angel of death to take the soul of Jibreel alayhi salam out. The, the heavens and shake and they say, Jibreel yamut, Jibreel dies. They are silenced and the angel of death takes his soul out. Then Mikael, then Israfil, then the angel of death takes his own soul out. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to address, call out to the criminals of the world, such as Pharaoh and Namrud and the, and, uh, the, the, the tyrants of the world. Where are you? Where are you, O disbelievers? Where are you, O so and so? Where are you, O criminals? O you who challenged me, where are you today? O you who thought you will overpower me? And then Allah says, Man baqi? Man baqi? Who is left? Who is left? Lam yabqa illa ana. Lam yabqa illa ana. I am the only one left. There's nothing else but me. Ana Allah. Ana al qahar Ana al wahab I am the overpowering. I am Allah. I am the everlasting. I am the all-powerful. Ana al qawi al majid I am the king of all kings. I am, I am. Subhanahu wa ta'ala praises himself with his attributes, with his glorious attributes and names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one worthy of this praise. For he is the most glorious, most merciful in every way beyond our imagination. At that point, Rasul Sallallahu tells us that people stay dead for only Allah knows how long. Some hadiths say 40. The companions who narrate these hadiths say, we don't know, did he mean 40 days, 40 years, 40 months? Allahu A'lam. But they stay dead for 40. وَيَغْضِبُ رَبِّي غَضَبًا لَمْ يَغْضَبْ مِثْلَهُ قط. Rasul Sallallahu tells us that our Lord will be angry in such a state of anger which he has never been before. Allah, there is an attribute of his which is anger. But when we describe something, it's not from our minds. We describe it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself. Or as the Prophet ﷺ said. But we always add to it the following ayah. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him or can be compared to him. 
and he sees and hears all things. We don't know. He sees is unlimited in his seeing, but it's not like ours. He hears unlimited in his hearing, but it's not like ours. Allah is angry, but it's not like our anger. In a manner that befits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not deny these words, for he said them, and the Prophet ﷺ said them. However, we cannot describe them, except the way Allah and his messenger described them. The point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a state of anger, in a manner that befits him. And why wouldn't he? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us every opportunity to earn great rewards. He was generous with the hasanat. He was generous in coming to us. says, If you come closer to me, a palm. I will come close to you, to you ten. If you come walking to me, I'll come, I'll come hastening to you. So on, so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, many ways. A hasana bi ashri amthaliha. If you do one good deed, Allah will multiply it into ten folds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies for whoever He wills. There are some of you who get more than ten. The sayyah, the sin is only one. You do a sin, it's only one. You do a hasana, it's multiplied by ten automatically. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all these opportunities. He gave us the ability, the faculties of our body to do this. He guided us, sent messengers to us, granted us His mercy, His forgiveness. Abdi. لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم أتيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا أتيتك بقرابها مغفرة Oh my servant If you come to me on a day of judgment and you have sins as much as the earth but you don't make partners with me then I will forgive them for you Allah is forgiving وتوبوا إلى الله توبة النصاع Repent to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Sincere repentance Allah سبحانه وتعالى will forgive your sins والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى says those who remember who do a bad deed or a very indecent act and they remember Allah and they say only Allah can forgive me and who else forgives but Allah so long as they don't insist on continuing to do it deliberately and uh, stubbornly who is Allah is telling us so forgiving my mercy has overcome my anger all of these opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us times in the day which Allah accepts repentance times in the day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts dua if you pray five prayers count it as fifty you're moving an obstacle off the road. It's like a sadaqah. Subhanallah, how many opportunities? Whereas the sayyah, a sin, is equal to one sin. You do major sins, Allah forgives them if you repent to Him. If you think of a sin, then you change your mind. Not to do it, it's a hasana. If you do it, it's just one sayyah. If you change your mind and do a hasana, instead it's multiplied by 70. What do you want more than that? So Allah is angry on that day. You know, when a father, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the best of examples. We're not comparing Allah to humans. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ However, just to bring something, bring a metaphor to your mind. A father, out of his love for his son or daughter, when his son or daughter go wrong, they get angry. But this anger is not an anger of tyranny or oppression. It's an anger of love. It comes from love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is compassionate and merciful with His servants. So why? Why do we worship someone other than him? He says, Oh my servant, I feed you, but you thank someone else. I clothe you, you thank someone else. You live on my earth and in my kingdom, and you worship someone else. Subhanallah. So Allah is angry. As the Prophet ﷺ states, and then the day of true resurrection comes. And I will end it today with the ayah of the Qur'an that speaks about the beginning of resurrection. Allah recreates Israfil alayhi salam who is the blower in the trumpet. Allah says in the Qur'an, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ
first time the trumpet will be blown and everything in the heavens and earth will be destroyed except who Allah wills not to and then it'll be blown into a second time and behold they are all up Qiyam standing Yanzurun looking and watching looking and watching it means everybody knows what's going to happen well they don't know what's going to happen to them but they know what that day is shakhisatun absaruhum their eyes are looking up like that with terror shakhisa like this jazakumullahu khair hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin